Hey, real estate agents, welcome to the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with my co-host, Joey Sampaga, the man with the plan. How's it going, Joey? I'm doing all right. How's everyone doing? Yeah, we're doing fine. Yeah. What kind of voice was that, anyway? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that my, was. It was my high pitch voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was trying something new, folks. I don't know what's going on. But we are the Real Estate Marketing Maniacs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, we are. We have an awesome guest with us today. And that guest is Ed Drummond with Capstone Realty Pros. How's it going, Ed? It's Ed. going great. Thanks hey, for having me, awesome. you guys. Yeah, thanks for being in, man. Yeah, dude, it's so awesome watching you guys do this right now. It's flipping yeah. off. Awesome. That's I love awesome. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, people, so need, cool. people should tune in and watch because we're two crazy guys. No, now we're three maniacs. Guys. Yeah. Um, we're going to have some fun today. Ed's, uh, you know, got a little bit different approach with real estate. He's, he's got um, a couple different things that are going at the same time, which sounds like they're complementing each other, which is awesome. Absolutely. Um, so why don't we first start with you? introducing yourself as you know how long you've been in real estate kind of what really compelled you to get into this business sure thanks Jeff so you know um, I'm Ed Drummond I'm the designated broker owner Capstone Realty Professionals Um, we've been around since 2012 prior to that though I was with a big box brokerage um, since 07 I got in when the market was was on the decline um, and you know kind of saw my opening as um, the market opened up. I was willing to take on just about anything, yeah. and it just taught us this hardcore hustle and get out there. Who cares what everybody else thinks? Just get out there and, and work. Yeah. Right. Um, prior to that, though, I, I was with a, a company that was in the real estate business. I was a vendor okay. uh, selling okay. selling uh, relocation products to realtors. So I had to get my license. This Got is when it. the market okay. was booming, and yeah. you know I saw all these realtors, you know, nationwide that were doing so great and. You know, a lot of times what I saw was something where I felt, uh, you know, maybe things could be tweaked a little differently. Um, so when I got into it, I just, you know, we put those things together. Yeah, yeah. So what what time frame was it? Like, what years were those? So probably? I got in. So I got into uh, the corporate sales in like oh, what was that? Like oh four to oh okay. s- oh six, and then at the beginning of oh six, we started seeing what was happening. The real there estate falling was directly tied into my numbers as well. So it just it just made sense to pop in and yeah. in 07. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. So you've been you've been around, you've seen the ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah, and, you uh, know, it's it's an interesting market, you know what I mean? Every year is totally different. It is. Yeah, it absolutely Almost is. Almost every month you have to really pay attention. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> With the markets uh, not only on the real estate side anymore, it seems like, huh? Um, well, that's that's great. That's great. So explain a little bit about your, your model. I know you've sure. got a couple different things going at the same time, and I believe they complement each other. They do. So back in 2008, um, I, I personally had a couple of investments, and uh, it, right now I'll tell you guys, the first two investments I ever made were the worst ever. So oh, I, no. I learned I learned my lesson back then, and then since then I just kind of have um, you know not made those same mistakes. But you're it's gonna helpful. Sh- you're going to share those. Investments? Yeah, you're going to tell us what. Yeah, what well, to not you know, invest was in? it like I bought? It, I just flip? bought it the wrong time. Oh, okay. So uh, like one in particular, I got so uh, enamored with this property that was a a. Um, apartment conversion to a flip uh, from the yeah. builder that I bought my first house from. Okay. Right, so I was like, "Oh man, these guys totally have my best interest in mind." Um, <laughs> they subsidized the HOA through the purchase, so that the first year I didn't have to pay an HOA. So I was like, "Oh my gosh, there's a tenant already in place." Whoa, look at this! But I didn't look at the numbers like I should have. Mm. So I knew the numbers well enough. But I didn't understand enough at that point how to really spread those numbers out and to, to like look at them long term. So after a few years, no longer cash flowing, no longer making sense, mm-hmm. and I paid grossly over. I mean, the property I bought at 145 dropped down to 35. Ouch. So Ooh. yeah, yeah. Ugh, punch in the gut. Yeah. Still have it, and wow. it's now cash flowing. But yeah. again, there were some things I had to do to make that to make that change. Yeah. Um, but again, I think you know that was that was before I got into real estate full time. Um, once I got in an '07, we saw an opening in '08 where it wasn't necessarily an opening; it was just a need. We saw so many people we were trying to help with short sales. Yeah, started having those conversations, and a lot of people that we were working with were veterans, were people that are um, getting deployed and going overseas. Got it. And we knew that those people could not. Um, Short sell, right? We don't want you short selling with a VA loan. Yeah. So hey, let mm. us hold it. Yeah, it's gonna suck maybe for a few years, but realistically, let us just hold it and manage it for you, and we'll figure it out. Right. And that's what we did. 
So, you know, by the time we started Capstone in 2012, we only had 35 properties under management, some of which were our own. But, you know, it was one of those things where those 35 kind of taught us the taught us the ropes, taught us, you know, I, I learned my lessons really early on with managing our own properties. Got it. Yeah. So it's after that, it just started, started rolling. Okay. All yeah. right. And that's helped you to, especially, especially having your own or going through your own experiences, right? Has kind of helped you form this, um, you know, you have a very strong opinion to using real estate to help build wealth. Absolutely. And I think you have those conversations with your clients, right? I do. And I think there, there are so many great ideas from different people about how to create wealth through real estate. Now, I have a particular model, right? I love my model because I know it. Um, I feel it's a real conservative real estate investing model. Um, but at the same time, as long as people have a plan and they're really thinking through that plan when it comes to real estate investing, it's it's hard to not let it make sense. Like they make sense. So with our model, yeah, it's very it's very cut and dry. We manage single family. We manage condos. We don't do anything outside of that. We don't mess with plexes. We don't mess with multifamily. We know, and we've tried in the past. We know that that's not something that we can absolutely excel in. Um, as well as when it comes to the numbers, I mean, I know the resale stuff. I know the single family stuff. We know when we can push the market when we can't. So that gives us a leg up when we're, you know, talking to an owner. Yeah. I really want them to see it through this set of eyes and understanding their goals and then saying, hey, does this align? If it does, oh, yeah, then we'll you know blow their socks off most of the time. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned before the show that sometimes you have to have that conversation of we have the house listed. But once it gets down to this certain point where, you know, whether it's doing price reductions or whatever the case that we've going to have to have that that talk about let's hold absolutely let's rent so like i've got a listing on the market right now and my clients know because they they know of our background in in the management side of things um, if i can't get it sold by a certain date you know my recommendation is if it doesn't get the number that we need by then i'm going to list it and put it on the market for lease i've already got the marketing you know, done. Yeah, sure. Professional photography is done. Walkthroughs are done. Everything's already done anyway. So, hey, let me just put it on the market. Let's buy ourselves another maybe six months to a year. More than likely, it'll be on another year lease. But at that point, you know, it'll help them out. It gives them options. Yeah. You know, so at that point, then the, the client can evaluate, does that option make sense or does it not? 90% of the time, we've already had that conversation before even going into you know the listing agreement yeah so we're really thinking through beforehand what makes sense for the particular client what are they going to do with the money if they sell the house right yeah where are they going to put it what you know is it going to make more money than this real estate investment or you know so we're we're trying to challenge people and getting to think that way so that at the end of the day you know we're not coming up short at the end of the day going yeah oh wow we should have thought of that you know yeah oh yeah no no that's a great idea uh, great information for sure. How about on the so on the retail side, on the real estate side, what are you doing right now, or what is you know you you and your team you know at your at your brokerage? What are they doing right now to be successful to get that business? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think right now what people want to know is that they do have options, and I mean I think that's our differentiator. When people align themselves with our organization, it's not just this is the only thing that we can do. So again, it comes back to the business model and saying. Hey, with our business model, if this doesn't work, like if this client would be better suited to manage this property instead, yeah. then let's do that. So for us, we position ourselves more as a company that can offer both options. It's very rare that I see in this market a company that can really say we could do both pretty well, right? Like yeah. really well. Sure. So it's like Usually companies use property management as a as a crutch or a, a backdrop to say, ah, it's OK, just throw it in the property management pool. Or on the other side, like I do know some guys who do property management exceptionally well here in town. They do such a good job with property management, but they might not do as much resale. We want to keep those very paralleled. Right. And right now, right now they are. Um, it's taken property management a little while to catch up to resale. But at this point, now it's it's charging forward. It's running. Yeah. Yeah. I think you said that it's almost 50 50. It point, is. Right? Yeah. We've got about 300 properties under management. We'll do um, at the end of this year. We'll probably do about 17, 18 million in resale. Yeah. And there's only a few of us. So it's you know, it's a good it's a good operation. It's it's getting more well oiled, well oiled as we as yeah. we go along. Um, next year, we'll be turning on the 
the marketing and the sales funnel again and keeping things running. This has been in the year of processes and you know, and, and some changes, but it's been great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love that you mentioned sales funnel because right. uh, we try to teach funnels okay. uh, in, in our classes, you know, to real estate agents. And um, I think that's something that a lot of agents just don't don't really truly understand how the funnel works. Right? Sure. But, uh, but anyway, I'm glad to hear you say that. We may have to talk off, off air a little bit about that. No, so, for sure. Um, so before we move to the next segment, how about – if you were to give one bit of advice to uh, to an agent who, let's say, he's either brand new to the business or maybe they're saying their business has slowed a little bit, okay, what would you tell them that they should go do right now? Get out of your own way and go and hustle and go show rentals. Hustle, right? Yeah. So I think realistically, um, this this was the same market when when it slows. It's the same type of thing that we saw in 07, right? When it slowed and all these people were like, oh, what do we what do? we do? Yeah. This, of course, is nowhere near that. This is nothing like it at all. Yeah. But I, I see the same mentality. When I got in, I just had to get out and hustle, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I met an awesome agent. She's a top producer here in the Valley. Um, I met her, um, and I, I won't drop her name, but we met at this this event not too long ago. And I, I asked her, I said, you know, what, what was it that got you to the level of success that you're at? And she basically said, hey, in the first year that I was in business, I was expecting leads from a source. That source didn't pan out. I had to go and show rentals. She, mm-hmm. she ended up closing like 85 rentals that year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A couple years after that, right? A few years after that, she's at 25 million. Wow. Right. So again, she's closing all these rentals. But what it did was it kept her relevant. It kept her yeah. having real estate conversations every day. Sure. And in, in when the market slows, I mean, I, I'm guilty of it. When the market slows, you start to second guess yourself sometimes. Right. Yeah. You start yeah. going, oh, man, is it me? You know, what am I not doing? Well, if we just have more conversations about real estate, people feel the passion. Oh, yeah. sure. People feel the conversation and we're helping more people. It's like. Hey, it's yeah. it's gonna come. Right? Right. Yeah, I like to say that even in real estate, if one side is not doing well, then the other side will. You know, you got when sales are down and you can't sell a house, you've got rentals, right? Right. Rentals are crazy, and when rentals are down, then sales are up, and you know, so you can work on one side of the uh, the teeter totter. Right? Absolutely, and I mean, yeah. rental leads, man. I mean, like we get like thirty rental leads a day, so it's like they're they're out there. So if people are looking for for a way to stay busy in this market, yeah. You know, they can even just start having those conversations. And to be honest, like we convert quite a few of those people to buyers right. or to sellers. Yeah. They may be people who are looking to rent that, you know, need to sell their house. Well, and, and that's exactly where I, what I was thinking when you said she did 85 rentals in one year. I'm 85. thinking that is building a massive pipeline totally. of future business Absolutely. and referrals. I mean, if she's willing to take care of them, because we know a lot of agents won't work rentals at all, unfortunately. So exactly. She's willing to do it. She's automatically a leg up. Anyway, yeah, no, that's sure. great. All right. So you ready to get in the ring with the maniacs? Let's do it. Okay, here we go. What's the best advice that anyone's ever given you? Uh, be humble. All right, like it. sweet. Yeah. How about your favorite mobile app? Uh, Waze. <laughs> Waze is always at the Waze. top of my list. It keeps coming back. Waze. What? Waze is the one that just gets me where I have to go. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. Plugs into my Tells calendar. Sure. Way oh go. my gosh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it just it it just helps me out tremendously. Cool. I th- did somebody mention that? Someone before, did mention that. I, but I, I never check looked it at it. W W A Y Z. W A Z E. Z E. Okay. Waze. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's right. the best mobile like GPS app that I've found. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. How about a book recommendation? Uh, Predictable Revenue, and I don't know who the revenue. author is, but it's an awesome book. Talks about funnels. Okay. Yeah. The, with the five different streams of income that we have right now, and I, you know, I basically pull it from that and say, okay, then taking that and saying, where are we going to make our business next year? So we have funnel one, say property management revenue. Prop number two, resale and buy side, resale sales side. Then we have like all these different funnels, and where are we going to get that? So each one comes into a different funnel, and we say, okay, for marketing, how are we going to market? Right now, we've got marketing to like our sphere. Sphere is the is the top spot sure. because yeah. Sphere knows us, likes us. They already us. know you. <laughs> totally. I mean, and, th- and that's basically what the book says too, is go after that first. And it's not a real estate book, but it's a good business book. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. How about uh, productivity tool or software that you use on a regular basis? Uh, my calendar. Calendar. Yeah. Everyone in my in my office has access to the calendars. We all control the calendar and you know everyone knows how to use it really, really well. Um, and that's that's kind of paramount to 
All right. To us, staying efficient. All right, cool. And the last question I'm going to have you draw from the mask here. Okay. This is beautiful. What is that, velvet? (laughs) (laughs) All right. What did I want to be growing up? Ooh, good question. Um, Property manager. Let's see. Well, you know, I never (laughs) thought real estate ever. It was always like I was going to be a secret service agent to start. Then it was FBI. Then it was, yeah, all these things. And then um, I have a a family that was in the military and I didn't go to the military. I went to college. So I never saw it as an option. So I was going to go like something to do with that. And then when I got to college, I thought I was going to save the world and I got an environmental science degree and didn't really use it much. Yeah. But but again, once I got out, yeah, it was. um, Now I want to sell green homes. You know thought about it in the okay. past yeah right. but again it's it's just not as uh, i'm not as passionate about it yet yeah yeah i feel like helping people create wealth the, the buy and hold model like i like it so much and you know i just learned so much from so many different investors like every time i'm talking to someone on the phone like every day i learn something new yeah. so it's like wow like look at how that person did it and then if i can share that with somebody else sure then they're like oh yeah that's a great idea i i, I like that part all right all right this has been a great interview. I appreciate you coming yes. in. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, awesome. Hey, if Definitely any really agents that are watching or listening want to reach out to you directly, is that okay? How, yeah, how absolutely. They do that? Yeah, call me on my, I mean, hit me up on my cell, 602-421-0912. Um, I'm open. I mean, seriously. Um, and then feel free to shoot me an email at ed at capstonerealtypros.com. All right, fantastic. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ed. Yeah, thank you Appreciate guys. It. And, uh, Thanks, guys. Yeah, and thank you to our sponsors. We've got Academy Mortgage, Jake Krabby yes. as one of our Jake. sponsors, along with Fidelity National Home Warranty, and they are awesome. They are awesome. Boom. There. They do a great job. They do a great job, don't they? All right, thanks, you all, and until next time, it's Jeff Underwood along with Joey Sampaga. The real estate marketing maniac. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good job. All right. Awesome. Oh, cool. The Weekly Closer Podcast is sponsored by Jake Krabby, NMLS number 877-141 at Academy Mortgage. Are you looking to buy or refinance a home? Jake Krabby is your mortgage professional. Contact Jake at 480-442-9291. Jake Krabby is a loan officer at Academy Mortgage, NMLS number 877-141. State license for Arizona number 0920357. AZBK number 0904081 and New Mexico number 877-141. Academy Mortgage Corporation, NMLS 3113 and New Mexico 01451. Call 480-442-9291. Address 15333 North Pima Road, Suite 205, Scottsdale, Arizona 85260. Academy Mortgage is an equal housing...